Hey yo, welcome back to my channel, No Excuses. My name is Sierra, and this video is on what it means to be a Christian. This is the second half of my video on Christian artists, which you can watch by clicking that little white box if you want to. Now, on the first video on this topic, I received a few comments on this section in my video. I want to point out that I don't know this trio very well. What I do know is that we disagree on topics I find hugely important to Christianity. Regardless, I don't have much information, and I'm not God, so I can't say if they're born again Christians or not. That's not my place at all. The comments went along the lines, I'm so glad you're a Christian, that doesn't bash others for their beliefs. Now don't get me wrong, I 100% agree that Christians need to love everyone they interact with, regardless of their beliefs. I do not agree with loving every person's beliefs, which is where I think these comments were pointing to, and where a lot of modern culture is pushing towards. I would like to clarify what I meant by what I said in the last video. I chose to do art for three specific content creators because 1. I've interacted with all of them to some degree, 2. I love their art styles, and 3. They're amazing at animation. I would consider at least one of them a friend of mine, and the other two are at least aware of my existence. This does not mean I agree with them on what they believe, but frankly, I can't know for sure what they believe in their hearts. All three never post much of anything about what they believe, other than they're Christians. I have talked to one of them to some extent about all this, but she may have changed her mind. That's what I meant by, I cannot determine if they are saved or not. Instead of addressing these three artists' beliefs, because I don't think I'm in a position to do so, I'll address the beliefs of many self-proclaiming Christians in their circle of influence, and all over the world. Maybe I'll even be addressing you, my viewer. Now before you toss me aside as another angry religious freak, I want to tell you why I'm even making this video, why I even have a YouTube channel. It's because I love you and every single viewer on my channel. You have intrinsic worth because God formed every detail of your being. Jesus gave his life for people just like you, people who accept him as their savior. My job, I firmly believe, is to reach the lost, and I am doing so through my art, and my dearest hope is that what I draw and what I say will touch you deeply and be a way for the Holy Spirit to begin work in your heart. Trust me, I hate conflict, and I am scared of insulting someone, especially one of the three artists I drew in my last video, but I also believe God is calling me to put this message out there for you to hear. The goal of all of Christianity is to accept Jesus as your savior. You cannot be a Christian if you haven't done so. That phrase, accept Jesus as your savior, has been so overused, it's hard to understand what that even means or why it matters. Well, let me explain. You have sinned, as have I, as has every human being on this earth. Knowing that you're human, I know you've lied countless times. You've most likely stolen something, like a pack of gum from the store when you were 12, or maybe something more recently. Jesus said that hating someone is equivalent to murder. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you've hated someone at least once. Jesus also said that when you lust after someone, you've committed adultery with them in your heart. Once again, I'm going to assume you've probably lusted after someone before. I've just taken you through only four of the Ten Commandments. These are the laws God set down for humankind in Exodus, and in our hearts. And all of us are accountable to keep them. But since none of us can, God tells us that since he is righteous and just God, so much so that he can't tolerate sinners in heaven, we are all destined for hell. No amount of confession, ignorance, anything will save you. You cannot save yourself from the sins you've piled on top of your head. But since God knows we couldn't save ourselves, he decided to do what we can't. God came down on earth as a human being, lived a sinless and perfect life, and died on a cross for us. Alright, I know that doesn't make much sense. Now imagine this. You're in court, and the judge has a massive pile of traffic tickets you've been racking up. You and the judge know that it's very serious. You could have killed yourself or someone else. There's no way you can pay for all the fines, though, and so the judge has to send you to jail. But then the judge is told someone has paid the massive amount of debt, and so we can legally let you go. Jesus paid our debt by dying for us. All we have to do is accept his gift of salvation. Now, if you're a modern Christian, chances are you have some problems with what I just said. Maybe you don't like the idea of hell and the fact that God will send sinners there. Well, without the threat of hell, why shouldn't we sin? Why can't we just live our lives here, on earth, however we want? And if there's no hell, then people like Hitler will be showing up in heaven with you. You see, because God is just, he just can't allow that to happen. Because he is wholly just and wholly righteous, he also cannot allow any sinners into heaven. What we often miss as modern Christians is God's sense of justice. Yes, he's a God of love, but he also is just and righteous. By ignoring that part of God, you take away a huge part of his character and create an idol, a false God who doesn't really exist. Which, by the way, is breaking the first and second of the Ten Commandments. Maybe you don't like the idea that sin is enough to condemn you. Sure, I've lied, but so does everyone. The only thing I've stolen was something small when I was a kid. I haven't murdered anyone, so, you know. If your sin isn't important, then why did Jesus die? In trying to make a more loving God, you've made a God who killed his own son for no reason. Once again, an idol. You need to take sin seriously because God does. 
Without someone perfect taking your place on Judgment Day, you will not make it into heaven. But really, this all comes back to your view about the Bible. Whether or not you like it, the Bible is God's word. He has claimed it as his, claimed that it is inerrant. Proverbs 35 6 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put his trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. If you don't trust in God's word, or not in all of it, you're setting yourself up higher than God. It's up to you which parts of the Bible are true. It's up to you to decide what God is really like. Your word is more important than God's. This is why it's so important to trust in the Bible, wholly in the Bible. You cannot know the true God without reading his word. And this is the mission of my YouTube channel. This is even why I ever do art. I want to help unbelievers believe, self-proclaiming Christians who have not been born again to trust God's word, and to give Christians the quote-unquote ammunition needed to survive in such a secularized world and go out and make disciples. I hope this video has helped you, no matter what category you're in. I would encourage you to go and watch some of the videos from Living Waters. Watching these videos have literally changed my life, and I would honestly say that without Living Waters, I would not be making this video. If you've liked the video, please hit the thumbs up. It genuinely does help more people see it. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.